Oh, hi friends. Do you know what is common to the ball? Hitting the ball. A player kicking the soccer ball. Jumping off the ground. The collision of two balls. Hitting a tennis shot. Or a boxer hitting his knockout punch. The answer is, in all these forces, the concept of impulse is used. And impulse is going to be the topic of this video. So let's get started. What does impulse mean? You must have heard the word impulsive. For example, we say he's a very impulsive person. Impulsive means to act suddenly, without thinking. So things done in a very short time. So just like we saw in the examples, we saw the ball hitting the wall or a player kicking the soccer ball and so on. In all those examples, there's a large force that acts for a very small time. We call this an impulsive force. In physics, the concept of impulse is used when there is a large force that acts for a small duration. So let's understand the impulse in a simple way using the ball bouncing example. When the ball hits the wall, it rebounds back. The wall is clearly applying a force on the ball and it reverses the motion of the ball. For how much time does the wall apply the force on the ball? The ball bounces back really fast. So the time that the force is applied is really, really small. Even if you watch the video in slow motion, can you see it is very hard to determine the time when the ball is in contact with the wall. Since the force acts for such a small time, it is very difficult to measure the force accurately. So what do we do here? Force and time duration of the force are both difficult to measure. Let's see if Newton's second law of motion can help us here. Do you remember Newton's second law? Newton's second law of motion states that rate of change of momentum of a body is directly proportional to the applied force and takes place in the direction in which the force acts. From Newton's second law of motion, we know that force equals rate of change of momentum. That is, change of momentum divided by the time. Now, since force and time are difficult to measure here, let's keep both these difficult guys on one side. So, I'm going to take time to the left hand side and we get the equation as force multiplied by time equals change in momentum. This product of force multiplied by time duration is defined as impulse. So, impulse equals to the change in momentum of the body. Change in momentum can be calculated as final momentum minus the initial momentum. So remember, it is never initial minus final. It is always final momentum minus the initial momentum. So impulse, which is the change in momentum, can now be easily measured. So the trick is that when you have a large force for a short time, force and time are difficult to measure. But the product, that is force multiplied by time, can be measured easily and it is called the impulse. Impulse is a measurable quantity and is equal to the change in momentum of the body. So let's see if we can calculate the impulse of the ball when we hit it on the ball. We will use the formula impulse equals change in momentum. Remember momentum is the product of mass and velocity. Let's say the mass of the ball is 100 grams. Let's convert the mass into SI unit. So mass 100 grams equals 0.1 kilogram. Let's say the velocity with which the ball hits the wall is 2 meters per second. The ball rebounds with the same velocity. So the return velocity is again 2 meters per second. So the change in momentum here is going to be the final momentum minus the initial momentum. That is mv minus mu. So if you plug in these values into the formula, you will get an answer of zero. But the change of momentum can't be zero since the ball is bouncing back. The wall is applying a force on the ball. So what went wrong here? Remember, velocity is a vector quantity. It has both magnitude and direction. So after collision with the wall, the ball moves in the opposite direction. So we need to take one velocity as positive and the other velocity as negative. 
Here I'm going to take the initial velocity as positive. So the initial velocity is two meters per second and the final velocity, which is after the collision with the wall is negative. So it will be minus two meters per second. So you can also take the reverse as well, but this is what I've taken here. The initial velocity as positive and the final velocity as negative. Now let's plug in these correct values into our formula and calculate the impulse. The impulse is going to be the change in momentum, which is mv minus mu. So that's going to be 0.1 multiplied by minus 2 minus 2. So we are getting the answer as minus 0.4 kg meter per second. This is the impulse that the wall applies on the ball. It is the product of force multiplied by the time duration. Now, what is the SI unit of impulse? As you can see from our calculations, we got the unit as kg meter per second. It has the same unit as momentum, as impulse equals to the change in momentum. Now, is impulse a scalar quantity or a vector quantity? What do you think? That's right, it is a vector quantity. Since momentum or change in momentum is also a vector, it has the same direction as the velocity, which is a vector. So impulse is also a vector quantity. It has both magnitude and direction. Here we calculated the impulse as minus 0.4 kg meter per second. So the magnitude or the value of the impulse is 0.4 kg meter per second. And it has a negative sign since the force is in the opposite direction to the motion. So the force makes the ball go back from the wall. So remember, impulse is a vector quantity. It has both a magnitude and a direction. Now a football quiz question for you. Do you know who holds the record for the fastest football kick? Is it Roberto Carlos, Ronnie Heberson, Lionel Messi or Cristiano Ronaldo? What do you think? The correct answer is Ronnie Heberson, the Brazilian footballer. Believe it or not, he kicked the ball at an amazing speed of 210 kilometers per hour. And no guesses, of course, he scored a goal. I don't think the goalkeeper or anybody saw that ball. 210 kilometers per hour is about 60 meters per second. The mass of the football is about 400 grams. So based on these numbers, can you calculate the impulse on the football by Ronnie Heberson? Do let me know your answers by putting it in the comments below. I'm looking forward to reading your answers and let's see if we can calculate the impulse that Ronnie Heberson generated on this record breaking kick where he hit the ball at 210 kilometers per hour. And of course he scored a goal. So I'm looking forward to your answers. Do put it in the comments below. Friends, I hope the concept of impulse is crystal clear to you now. So next time when you're bouncing the ball or hitting a tennis shot or playing cricket, do remember the impulse force, right? It is a large force that acts for a very short time. And can I see an example of an impulse force right now? Hit the like button, share button and subscribe button with an impulse and make sure you have subscribed to our YouTube channel. Don't forget to click on the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any of our videos. And do check out our website manuchaacademy.com and our Android app Manucha Academy. We have full courses on science, maths, coding and artificial intelligence. Links are given below. So do check it out and do share it out with all your friends. So stay connected with us and keep on learning.